The Inuit people, formerly known as Eskimos, inhabit the Arctic, where the summer only lasts one to two months. The roots of Inuit art lie in the prehistoric past and the influence of European visitors since the 16th century. Their society, however, is not frozen in time. Contemporary Inuit art emerged in the late 1940s. Hi, we're here at the Inuit Gallery with Liz Ball, the curator of the collection. Liz, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Leslie, for coming. Well, this is such a treat uh, to see Tom's collection. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's a really beautiful collection. Oh, it? it spans a, about 300 BC to contemporary pieces. It is a mix of both utilitarian and art objects. Uh, Tom had an interest in collecting this. It started in about 35 years ago, oh and he saw a reclining walrus sculpture that was just beautiful and simple, and being a designer, it really appealed to kind of his graphic nature. Sure. So he, he picked up that one, and then being the man that he was, he was very fascinated by it, so he started doing some research on it and then looking for more pieces, and one thing led to another, and here we are with a collection of about 390 pieces. The other pieces that you see here are a mix of 19th and 20th century pieces. Uh, they're a mix of utilitarian pieces. There's a sewing box here that you see with the little Handle. Handle and the blue Russian trade beads. A yeah. wound plug? A wound plug. A wound for a human? Or uh, a no, a wound for an animal. Wow. And um, when That's they were free band aids, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Again, a mix of materials from uh, wood, Russian trade beads again, walrus whiskers, there's ivory, uh, quite a mix. It's Again, the mix of, in this that case in particular, those are really utilitarian objects yes, for everyday life. But each of them embellished in a way that brings out Still the artistic, animal spirit. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, everything beautiful. they everything they use, they imbibed with some part of the their culture into it. it you know, they could have just made a handle on a gaff, but instead Which is they what made. Which we would do in present day. <laughs> right, but instead they really carve it with an animal spirit, a helping spirit, to help them with their, their hunt or, or whatever the uh, particular uh, particular action is. We have here, our, we have two journals. Tom used to, on his trips to Alaska, he would take a journal of his own experiences, oh, okay. and as he was as he was traveling, he would write about his travels, and of course, being the artist incredible artist that mm -hmm. he was, he would do these just magnificent sketches And this of is objects. the skull to the left? This, is, this was a fox skull. Here he had um, sketched a, a bird skull. Oh he was, so he was not only interested in the art, but the whole environment of Alaska. <laughs> in addition to that, each time he made a purchase, he would keep a journal that um, specified each item, each oh item goodness. that he bought, he assigned a number, he wrote about where he bought it, the name of the object, the year, oh that uh, or any information that he had, the year that it was made, the materials, and then he would write a description. And in some cases, he would even do a lovely little sketch of it. So uh, Liz, was this kind of a, a, this was the database, This was correct? basically the handwritten database, um, oh. and then a few years ago, I had developed a FileMaker digital database that we would transfer this information to a digital searchable format. Um, the intention was to photograph everything, and Tom had started doing some photography of the pieces, but unfortunately Tom passed away mm -hmm. in uh, February of 2006. Even if you don't know anything about this type of art, it's very engaging. Sure. You know, there, there's there's objects here, like this piece in particular. Which I'm sure will be a feature at the museum. Let's talk about this. this. Is she or he is wild. He is wild, <laughs> and actually, he was part of a an episode of Law and Order. Oh my goodness. But, you know you know that show. Sure. And, um, was he a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. He, he was in the opening sequence of this show, and what, what 
what I think is going to be great is when this piece is in the museum, you can imagine uh, a group of school kids coming through the museum and how difficult it is sometimes to keep kids' attention. Sure. But <laughs> when their uh, docent can say to them, now this piece was on television, you can just imagine wow. the kids going, wow, <laughs> now they I can saw identify piece. with it. <laughs> exactly. And you can see how kids will go up to it and mimic it. Make monster faces. Make monster yes. faces. And so it'll, it's very engaging. Speaking of children identifying with things, I, I'm sure they could identify with the pieces behind us. A lot of children play with dolls, although this would not be the type that this you would want not be the touching. Type. Absolutely. Tell me about these. These are a, a group of different dolls from different time periods. Um, they all represent various aspects of northern life. Um, some of them show the actual outfits that the the people would wear. Look at that fur. Isn't That's that wonderful? Great. Uh, and they're created with the actual materials that people would actually make clothing out of. Oh my goodness. So they are uh, good representations of how people actually dress. I mean, boy, when you look at this piece here on the right, wow, the fabric that's deteriorating. I mean, you really realize how fragile these are. Absolutely. They're just beautiful. And I love the simplicity of the face on this one. It gets back to the contemporary artist again, the women in the boat. Exactly. Even the, the monster kind of face. There's a real <laughs> simplicity to it that's just haunting. This, this room has some really great pieces. This is one of, was one of Tom's favorites. <sighs> this is a raven teaching the shaman to fly. Oh my gosh. It's just a wonderful, wonderful piece. The balance of it, it's just... You can a just imagine piece. the bird taking off and the man, and then lowering exactly. and the man going on. This exactly. is great. And then this room also has a series of masks. Oh, um, this this mask in particular is very interesting. It's an owl on the top and a wolf on the bottom. Oh which my is gosh! A very unusual mask. Do you mean the eyes are of yeah, an owl see, and the if face? If you look at that, that's that's an, an owl. owl, and then you look at that, and that's a wolf. Oh, I see. That's oh. very interesting. And they well, people were, actually wear these? They would wear oh, yeah, them. I can see as, strings on them. Yeah, as part of a, a ritual that they would do. They're actually, some of them are actually very tribal looking, aren't they? Almost African. Uh, they definitely have yeah. a similarity to African. And then you have a whole series of masks here. Uh, Tom very much enjoyed the whole mask theme. Yes. Uh, and it's a very effective way to display them. I love this. But tell me what's behind you, Liz. I've been well, eyeing that. This piece in particular was a lot of fun. Oh, look at that. We always They're rocking, aren't they? They are. We always imagined that when we turned out the lights, they'd get start. up and start dancing and we'd come in and they'd be in a different spot. But they it really tells a wonderful tale of of life in in the village and their dancing and their traditions. Their their the drummers in the back are beating uh, walrus uh, or seal Seal intestine drums, I think it is. Wow! And what are the pants that they're wearing? Uh, a new they're look. Probably a new look. <laughs> they're they're probably fur seal of skin. some kind. Yeah. yeah. 